there in internet land. I am pleased to be here with you and with Dave Haas. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. So let's let's just make sure everybody can hear us and see us, and then we'll get going. I see several waiting. All right. Let's see. We've got Deborah. Janine, and I do believe we've got Richard here. Richard Ash, the owner of Bolton right. Instruments, is here. Um, can you guys hear us okay? Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. I just need somebody to let me know you can hear us. Can you hear? And hopefully you can. <laughs> Nobody's telling me. I wonder. Karen Dotson. Hello, Karen. Full craft just said they can hear. Oh, okay. There it is. All right, great. Wonderful. Well, let's get started. I have the pleasure and privilege of interviewing Mr. Dave Haas today. So if he'd like to just say hello and uh, give a brief little introduction, go ahead and do that, Dave. Hi, everybody. Glad that you're here. Uh, Mandy, thank you for uh, doing this. And Richard, thanks for, you know, promoting these videos. It's going to be great to share a little bit of myself with you. And I'm looking forward very, very much to doing that. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so let's start out with uh, just a basic, how'd you get started with the Mountain Dulcimer? I know you've been playing a little while. So how'd you get started? I got started. I've been playing the guitar since uh, freshman year of, of college. So I got started uh, there. I didn't get involved like in high school and junior high with band and all choir. I, I wish I had, but I was too involved playing chess. Oh, yeah. And so I didn't, I didn't, music came a little bit later uh, for me. Uh -huh. And uh, about my freshman year of college, I got going on guitar, but the dulcimer didn't come till after. Uh, I graduated. I was teaching high school for about four years. I went back to graduate school, got a PhD in chemistry, was hired by Union Carbide, and that took us to work at their R&D center in Charleston, West Virginia. That took us to West Virginia. And my wife, Jeannie, uh, liked to go to craft shows. And so mm -hmm. we would go, and mm -hmm. there were uh, dulcimers on the table. And yep. I have never seen one before and uh, must have gone over and strummed one and said something like, gee, that looks like that might be fun. Yep. Okay. And shortly thereafter, a dulcimer showed up at my doorstep. Jeannie had gotten me one for, uh, I think it was a birthday present. And, oh, my, wow. and my life was changed Absolutely. forever. <laughs> forever. Great story. I love that. So you'll forever have to be thanking her for that. That's right. That's right. right for going to craft shows. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's awesome. So you said you play guitar. Do you still mm -hmm. play guitar? Still play guitar. Uh, I play at church. I lead uh, uh, lead uh, worship services. On I'm real involved in uh, some Christian retreat experiences. The uh, the walk to Emmaus, uh, walk to Emmaus, Kairos, which is a prison ministry where mm -hmm. we go. And put on three and a half day retreat experiences, Teens Encounter Christ, a, a bunch of different okay. Christian retreat experiences. And so I go and I lead, lead the praise and worship on these things with guitar, but also with dulcimer. Nice. What and about you? In fact, interesting, interesting story. Uh, I met, uh, we do the, this Kairos at uh, Mount Olive Correctional Complex, maximum security state prison. And I met a dulcimer builder in prison at ma in maximum security prison wow. and uh and so he builds he builds really nice dulcimers and he's made he's made a couple of them for me uh but uh it's it's been great to you know to to see that and and uh and to experience that and it's really neat they they build these dulcimers and then they put if you look on the inside of the sound holes they write scripture passages on yep. the insides of their dulcimers and nice. then he gets together before they ship them out he gets together with a couple of his friends and they lay hands and they pray 
over the dulcimer that it nice. will go out and do God's work. God's oh. work will be done through these instruments. That's that really, cool. really neat. Really, really neat. That is really awesome. Um, uh, are, do they have a website or anything? Uh, no, <laughs> they, they don't have a website. <laughs> but uh, it's if it's the Mount Olive uh, Correctional Complex, and it's their if you called and asked for their craft store, they would be able to uh, uh, put you in touch with this guy. The builder is actually his name is Rick Ellison that builds these. Wow, that is that is a beautiful story. Uh huh. Um, okay. Uh, and for everybody here, go ahead and ask Dave questions in the comments, and we'll get to them as we as we go through here. And I've also put a link, and I've pinned it to the top, a link to Dave's website, DaveHaasMusic.com. Make sure you check that out. He's got tons of stuff on there, and that's what we're going to lead into next. Um, but first, I have one thing I have to say to a friend that I see who has popped on here, and that is Lori. Hey, Lori. It is her birthday today, so everybody say happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday, happy Lori. Happy birthday. She loves the Mountain Dulcimer. But, um, all right, so your website. Um, the website is DaveHawsMusic.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I apologize that the dates, if you look uh, at the upcoming events, the information is all garbled up. And uh, I've been trying to get that fixed. I'm having trouble with the website. And, uh, oh, yeah. But I've got, I'll try to do that within the next next couple of days, get that all fixed up. So why don't you tell us about uh, some of your uh, upcoming events that you're going to be heading off to so that if they... Sure, I got a whole bunch of things going for this this year, which is great that things are reopening and we're actually able to get out and, and do live things with live people. That's oh, wonderful. Yeah. We just had Kentucky Music Week last week in Bartstown, Kentucky, and that's always that's always a lot of fun. Uh, I'm leaving uh, tomorrow morning. My wife Jeannie and I were flying out of Charleston, and we're going to Oregon, out to Oregon, to Joseph, Oregon, for the Wallawa. Wallawa Dulcimer Festival that's run by Heidi Muller and Bob Webb. They run that beautiful, beautiful, it's in the Wallawa Valley in uh, Oregon, eastern side of Oregon, just gorgeous country. And uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I've been out, I think this is about the fourth time I've been out there. So it's, it's, it's just great. It's fun. And when is that this weekend or? That's, that's, no, that's this, this entire week. It's July the 3rd, July the 3rd through the, uh, the 8th. Okay. And then we get back, uh, we get back on Sunday, flying back on Sunday about 11 o'clock at night. We've got Monday to get ready. And then I get on, we load up the motor home and we're headed up to Everett, Michigan for the, uh, uh, the Dulcimer Players Fun Fest that's up there. Mm -hmm. and so that'll be, that'll be good. It'll be act actually the first year that I've been up there as a, a performer and a a vendor and a, a performer and instructor. So I'm looking, huh? looking forward to that. That'll be fun. Lots of people. And what's the date on that one? What's the date for that? So that one is the 13th. That's July 13th through the 17th. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then, what, then, what, what then, and, and then at the end of the month, I leave for, uh, on the 29th of the month, I drive, there's an Appalachian String Band Festival that's in, uh, it's north of Beckley, West Virginia at Camp Washington Carver. And they'll get 3,000 people there camping. And nice. uh, it's all old time music with banjos and, uh, and mandolins and guitars. And, and I, just, I just love that kind of music. Love that oh, yeah. kind of music. And people play till four in the morning every night. They're up. Oh, wow. And lots and lots of young people. Lots of young people. When I go to dulcimer festivals, the folks tend to be a little bit on the, I'll say, older side, a little yeah. bit. But, <laughs> but here there's kids, you know, lots of kids that are in, you know, junior high, high school, college age kids and uh, that That's are there. Right. So it's just, it's wonderful to just see that kind of excitement for, for music. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, and really, you know, kids trying to get them interested in the dulcimer and old time music and all that is a really good thing. I mean, I, I love to yeah. do that as well. That's, that's awesome. Um, okay. Also on your website, 
I saw something about dulcimers for David. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, there's a uh, a project. Uh, David Schnaufer, for those that uh, you know that didn't know him, David was just a wonderful, wonderful dulcimer player. Uh, traveled around the country. This is doing doing the dulcimer and inspired lots and lots of people, uh, including myself and Tol Glazner and uh, Aaron May and uh, just a whole whole bunch of you know some of the the good performers that you see today. And he was in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, to do workshops and a concert back in, I think it was 19, uh, maybe around 98, around 98. And Bob Webb, who headed up our group here, had invited him to come. And so he gave some workshops uh, in the morning. We had lunch and maybe one after lunch. And then as typical, when I travel around and we do a concert afterwards. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so a storm had come through Charleston and had knocked out all the electricity uh, about the time it was for this concert to begin. So yeah. there was enough people had already gathered in the sanctuary there. It was at a, a church, had wonderful acoustics, and there was enough light you know, coming in through the windows and a wonderful acoustic space. So David just sat up on the altar space that they have there, sat there and uh, to do his concert, uh, just unplugged unplug. And so I asked him, I had my video camera and I asked him, would it be all right if, uh, if I recorded the concert and he said, Oh yeah, that'd be okay. So I, I put my camera like six feet in front of him and recorded this wonderful concert. It was about an hour and a half that went on. Well, David, uh, as time went on, David got, uh, got sick and he ended up passing away in 2006. And mm -hmm. shortly afterwards, uh, Debbie Porter, uh, who's a, been a longtime friend of David's, started a uh, project called Dulcimers for David. And they do fundraisers to then purchase dulcimers to give to young children that show an interest in, in the dulcimer. And so I thought, well, gee, I had this, uh, I had this uh, video of, of it, and Bob Webb helped me to digitize it and get the audio quality good on it. And mm -hmm. uh, I thought, what a great thing to donate this to this project, Dulcimers for David. So yeah. we did that. We did that. I did that. And uh, and so Debbie uh, worked and had uh, had uh, DVDs made up. So these are not CDs, but they're actually DVDs. It's Very an hour and a half concert with David. And you really get a sense of his personality and mm -hmm. uh, lots of and and the concert and there's lots of lots of good stuff that he's got on here uh but anyway those are available they're available on my website uh, yep. davefarnsmusic.com they're 25 dollars. Yep. all of the money all of the money goes to supporting this effort for dulcimers for david so you'll be helping young people to yeah. experience the joy that we've all experienced with the dulcimer and to fall in love with this uh, wonderful instrument so please uh please yep. support the effort DavePawsMusic.com. Yeah. Yes, and I, I saw somewhere, I think they gave, didn't they give two dulcimers from the... Uh, they did, the they just, Kentucky they Music. gave them at uh, Kentucky Music Week at this past, uh, this past weekend, yeah. Yeah, and so they really give them, they make sure they give them real quality instruments too. They do, they do. A lot of times they're, uh, they might be, uh, uh, they were giving for a while McSpadden Ginger. Uh-huh. Uh, but sometimes people donate dulcimers and yep. if they're in good shape, uh, if they're in good shape, then they'll use they'll use those too. Yeah, what a great that's a great program. Right. So thanks to Debbie Porter for you know her efforts in starting this thing up and just just keeping it going. Yeah. Okay. So we've got we've got a question for you. Let me see. Uh huh. So Lori says, Dave, what is the first song you play to warm up with? Do you have something like that that you do, or? I don't. I don't really have like a warm up song, but I do have. Uh, normally, if I'm going to be playing in concert or I'm working on a piece I'm going to do that I'm struggling with, uh, then yeah. that's usually the first one that I want. I want to go over to to make sure that I can work out the bugs with that. So that's yeah. uh, that's that's a good. I like to play, you know, fast. I love to play fiddle tunes, but I also really love to just play slow and melodically and uh, play, you know, by plucking the strings one at a time. And I love that that style of play. 
Yes, yes. And I put up uh, yesterday, and you, you can find it on the channel here, Dave playing America the Beautiful, and it's just a, a gorgeous arrangement. So if you haven't heard that, make sure you watch that as well. That's really... Yeah, it, always, it always amazes me the beautiful music you can make with three strings and half of the frets missing. <laughs> you, can, you can just make just completely awesome music uh, with this. It's, and so it's, uh, I love, love the dulcimer. Love the dulcimer. Yes, me too. It's absolutely great. Okay, we've got another question for you here from Jason. Let's see if I can get it to okay. come up. He says, what's the first song you learned to play on the mountain dulcimer? And then he also asked about a guitar. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. The first song I learned to play on the mountain dulcimer was probably like everybody else was, uh, was uh, Boiling Cabbage Down. <laughs> I think that was probably the first one. And then yeah. uh, I took uh, some, uh, I got my uh, first dulcimer and uh, sort of tuned it uh I wasn't sure how it was tuned. I, I thought it was tuned to maybe an open D. And uh -huh. uh, in fact, it's it's really funny. I got this uh so the to answer the question, uh I started taking some lessons, group lessons with Bob Webb was offering, and he got us going on a uh Richard Farinia song that was called Tuleries. Uh uh -huh. and uh, Richard Farinia was like a, a dulcimer player like in the 60s. Uh -huh. And and uh, and was a big you know, was big in the dulcimer at that time. It was pretty well known. But I got going on that. On guitar, the first song I ever learned, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably just uh, Amazing Grace or something like that. Oh, actually, no, no, no. That's that's not true. Amazing. I got into the uh, into the guitar because my freshman year, uh, there was a, a, a student, another student that was down, uh, down the hall, uh, like three doors down. And uh, he had an electric guitar, and he had a wall that was stacked full of amplifiers and that. Oh. And, and so he really loved to rock out with that guitar. But he had an acoustic guitar. He had an mm -hmm. acoustic guitar. And so he, I showed some interest and sat down. So he would lend me his guitar, take back with my room, and he showed me how to play Stairway to Heaven. Oh, nice. Their way to heaven, and so that was the that was the first uh, first song that I'd really played on the guitar. Oh, neat! <laughs> All right, we've got some more questions. Let's go to. I'm trying to. Okay, Richard asked, "Do you play other instruments other than dulcimer and guitar?" Well, I play. I've got. Uh, I. I've got the, the dulcimer and the guitar, as you know, ukulele. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I play that. Uh, I've got some instruments that I would, I play the djembe, which is a, uh, which is a drum, oh. a drum uh, yeah. that's done. And so that's, that's fun. So I do a little bit of percussion. Nice. Um, the, I bought some instruments that I would love to learn when I get the time. I bought a, yeah. uh, 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 an old time uh, five string banjo claw hammer banjo, yeah. yeah in fact, and and also what have I, I got a mandolin also, but I haven't. I've got to just yeah. got to learn how to play those. Uh, yeah. Folkcraft uh, has this wonderful instrument. It's called a lapjo. They call yeah. it a lapjo, and this is a uh, just a this is this thing is awesome. It's. Uh, because one of the one of the I love to play old time music and I love to jam with other folks, but one of the things that's been difficult with the dulcimer is that it tends to be on the quiet side. It tends right. to be on the quiet side. So when you're there with hammered dulcimers, you're there with those. Uh, you know, it's hard to to hear yourself. And, and so this thing has the volume. That's this right. thing has the volume, and I love this because it lets me keep right up with all those other players so from here on down it's a full it's a full banjo head but from yep. this side up you can see the uneven spacings of the frets it's a dulcimer it's a dulcimer and so, so you've it, got plays, the best of worlds. <laughs> it plays like a dulcimer but it's it sounds like a banjo but it's got the volume and so yep. you already know how to play this and you have to alter your technique lighten up your technique to make it sound good and i've been teaching lately i've been teaching some classes on how to do that, how to play this thing. And they become real popular. I just oh, thought yeah. it, 
where where was I? I was oh at Kentucky Music Week. Uh, Nancy uh -huh. Barker had called and asked specifically that I teach that as one of the classes, and so I must have about twenty people in there, and it was wonderful. Uh -huh. they, did a, they did a great job. Great, awesome. All right, let's see. We've got another question from Janine. America the Beautiful was lovely. Have you taught that, or do you have a tab for it available? Uh, I do have uh, both. I, I have taught that. I usually teach that uh, uh, to folks, uh, intermediate advanced groups that are looking to, uh, uh, and I encourage people to, when they come up with their own arrangements of songs to be able to move the melody around. So you, once you find, you know, a really nice version, it could be a fiddle tune, something fast, could be something really slow. But once you've done that, to make the song, to keep it interesting and not just play the same thing over and over again. Right. And so the way to do that, my approach to doing that is to just move the melody around. And so I'll go, oh, after I've finished it one time through, I'll go over to the bass side with it. I'll go up an octave higher with it and then yeah. add a nice little introduction and an ending. And you've got a nice arrangement that's going to be that people can listen to for three or four minutes and, and not be bored with it. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to to this also. Um, talk about for a minute your books and CDs and everything you've got available uh, teaching resources there on your website. Okay. Okay. Well, I've got a number of I've got seven books that are out there. Uh, seven books. They've all got you know CDs in there now. Uh, probably uh, a real popular one with Dalton or clubs now. I think Richard uses this with his club. That's one of the books that they use, but it's called Let's Jam. And so it's got 142 arrangements of uh, wow. tunes that are that you're, are likely to be played at a, at a jam session. Nice. Uh, that on the back side of this is a handy dandy little chord chart for nice. uh, you know finding finding your chords. So that's doesn't, been- Doesn't that come with CDs also? Yeah, they all come with CDs. They all come with CDs and these are, these are actually MIDI files that are there. I'm in the process of getting actual dulcimer files created so people can download and listen to this. But these are gives you the tones of the tunes and you can right. play right along with what's in the what's in the book. Nice. Uh, other other things that I've got, I've got a book that's called uh, Fun Fiddle Tunes. Okay, uh -huh. Fun Fiddle Tunes. It's got a yellow cover, looks like this. This actually has two CDs in it. And it's, this is how to play more smoothly with your strumming. And then people always ask, you know, what fingers do I use, you know, with my left hand, you know, what fingers do I use? And so it's got good explanation of that. It's got about 11 exercises that are there. And then just nice. 32 popular fiddle tunes. And then I've got an instructional book for playing slowly, plucking the strings one at a time called Beautiful Melodies. It's got mm -hmm. a scene that's on the... Uh, a CD that's on the inside, and this is this book is from to novice to intermediate, so it takes you from square one on how to start to pluck the song, the strings, yep. just starting with like the melody and the bass, plucking those, and then we play a tune called Fre Frere Jaca that everybody yep. knows. We play that based on the, the exercises that we've got. Nice. Then there's more beautiful melodies, which is uh, intermediate to advanced, where we move the melody around on the fretboard. And the latest CD that I've got is called Going Home, uh, Going Home. Um, it's actually, this is what the CD actually looks like. And I've actually sold out of the CD, so I've gone ahead and, and made copies and I'm putting that in all, all the books oh, right nice. now. Nice. But this is, so this has got like complete arrangements of tunes, both fiddle tunes, both fiddle tunes and also uh, slower tunes. It's got some hymns. It's got some... Uh, nice got some uh celtic stuff that's in here and uh and but it's got you know here let's play here's the introduction then let's start with the on the melody side then let's move it to the bass and go back to the melody and then we'll have a ending we'll put on a a uh, uh we'll close it out with the uh the ending and and so all of that stuff is spelled out in here and it now comes with a, a cd and then i've right. got a real popular chord chart that's out i didn't pull one of those off but it's a uh, that that shows you how the chords are laid out all over the dulcimer fretboard. Here's all the D chords and the shapes that they're in, L shapes and slanted shapes and that. And so all that is spelled out in that chord chart. 
Nice. And everybody can just check out your website to get any of that stuff. Yeah, DaveHawkMusic.com. I also have four uh, acoustic CDs that are just night really nice, easy li to listen to. Uh, that's mm -hmm. fine. And then there's, of course, the David Schnaufer DVD that's that's right. out there. Right. Okay, let's see. We've got we've got a lot of comments here. That's awesome. All right, Jim Nichols says, I saw Dave at the Winston-Salem Festival and take lessons from Mandy, so I just had to order my first full craft dulcimer. All it's right. Just beginners. Well, Jim, I'm sure. I know this already, and so does Dave. You're getting a quality instrument. I can Absolutely. promise you that. Bolt craft is second to none. I'm telling you what. Uh, people are having fun in the comments. That's great. <laughs> All right, here's another question. Let's see. Lori asks, Dave, how many dulcimers do you have? <laughs> Somehow I knew that was going to be asked. I, mean, I would say, how many dulcimers do I have? Oh, my gosh. I would say at least 20. At least nice. 20. At least wow. 20. Yeah. Okay, so that leads me to this. Um, favorite dulcimer and favorite fret combo, all that sort of thing. Do you have do you have any? Do I have any? Well, I... A favorite. Favorite fret combination, you know, favorite... Yeah. This, is, uh, this is my favorite dulcimer. This is actually... Uh, the first dulcimer that uh, Fullcraft made for me when they asked me to be an endorsing artist. This one is, uh, and it was wonderful experience because I got to go to their shop and I actually picked out the woods, the specific nice. pieces of wood that was going to be used. So it was like, it was like a kid at Christmas, you know, getting yeah. to do that. And uh, so what I, what I like to play, so this is a, so the, the dulcimer is a, it's got a Western red cedar top on it and it's got claro walnut on the sides and the back I, I like woods that are have a lot of figure in them and yeah. so these were so this is claro walnut that they get, get i think from a root of a tree in northern california and then i like a long scale so this has got 29 and a quarter uh which oh. is the longest scale that they make and I just wow. love it it's got more volume you get more you get more sound with the longer longer uh, ringing strings that are there. And uh, the other thing that it does, the other thing that it does is it spreads the frets out in this octave region. So when you go up and, you know, on the octave higher, you've got more room to put your fingers down and do yeah. things. I've got, this is kind of unique. I've got a Very partial, unique. I've got a partial one and a half fret here rather yeah. than the full one and a half fret going you across. Wanted to, you know. <laughs> Pardon? You want to see that yeah, because I slot, I slide a lot on my. Yeah. I do a lot of sliding, and with that that extra fret, I get that extra note that's in there. So I, yeah. I like to slide across there, uh, and so I don't have the full. Uh, I don't have the full one and a half fret. I've been res uh, I've been a holdout. <laughs> <laughs> okay. on doing that. But I, I love the partial one there. Interesting though, Fullcraft just made that beautiful lap joe for me. And there mm -hmm. I had uh, them purposely uh, purposely put the, the one and a half right on. So I, I do have a full one and a half there. And that's because the way that I play it, it's more selective and I'm doing more kind of flat picking with it than I am sliding like I do on the, on the regular dulcimer. But this, uh, yeah, this, so this is my favorite. It's got the nice little, uh, it's got a little, the Fishman pickup, which is just awesome. When you plug yeah. the thing in, it's got, and it's an active pickup. It's got a little battery that's in here. And then it's got tone controls on here. It's got your volume control, which is wonderful to have. And it just really boosts a lot of signal out of that amplifier. It sounds fantastic. And then I've got the Galax back, the little double back on here, which gives yeah. me more, more volume. Yeah, and great the stain with those two, you know, the Galax. Yeah. Oh, so cool. anyway, I love my full craft dulcimers. They yeah. uh, made that interesting. Uh, they wanted to customize it and do something and it, for me. And at the time, I was a chemistry professor at, uh -huh. at Charleston. And so they inset in here, inlaid in here. This is a water molecule. This is a water molecule. H2O. <laughs> Did you ever, Mandy, did you ever take chemistry? 
I did. Did you, did you ever use those little ball and stick models? Yes. <laughs> well, this is this is a water molecule. So this is the red one is oxygen, and the two white ones are hydrogen. hydrogen. Yeah. And the bond angle is 104.5 degrees. And, wow. And so they they did that for me, and they made a, an identical one that's like this. That's a baritone that I've got strung up as a baritone dulcimer, and it just sounds it sounds awesome. It's wonderful, wonderful. Nice. Now, so I love, love my full craft dulcimers. That leads me to more about the full craft. Okay, so you've got. Uh, are you you're mostly a pick player, right? You don't do a lot of yes. Uh, not, not with fingers. No, I, I can play with the fingers, but I just, I like the pick because I, it gives me more volume and it gives yeah. me not a flexibility to, you know, strum and then do th things with plucking the strings one at a time. Yeah. So I've seen um, the standard, the baritone, the bass, the max dad. What are your thoughts there? Um, what do you lean to the most? And, uh, you know, they're, they're all great. I've got all of them. I've got all, I've got a base dulcimer. I've got the Maxdad. Uh, love the Maxdad. Love the Maxdad, and it's uh, a little more guitarish in sound because you've got the you got the trebly strings that we have here, but you've got the bass side uh, that we don't. And I, so I'm enjoying playing that uh, with uh, you know with uh, plucking the strings you know with my with my fingers or with a pick, but playing slower kinds of things. Like right. That. And, and that's uh, uh, that's a five string, right? That's a five string tune D A D A D D A D. So the first three strings are the D A D that we have here. And then you've yeah. got an A that's that's lower, that's an octave lower than this A that we have. And you've got a D that's even an octave lower than this. Nice. So you really got so this would be, if you want to think of it, this is D A D. And then the bass string here. That would be the melody string on a bass dulcimer. So you'd have D and then an, a lower A and a D, and you've got so you've got all of that. So you can yeah. play, you know, a regular tune on the on the melody side of the dulcimer. Then you can take it over and play it on the bass side. You could use just those three strings. I tend to find that it, it's really nicely played by playing across all the strings and by mm -hmm. taking some of the chords, you know, where I'd maybe like a G chord where I'd have mm -hmm. like a a three one zero here. Well, I might play that three on the bass side, play uh -huh. that three on the bass side, and uh, this on the melody side, and I get some really, you get some really a uh, fuller, deeper chord because you've got that bass string in there rather than than uh, this bass string that's on here. You've got a lower, and, deeper, deeper tone. And that's really you need to combine them both, you know, because we don't have much bass in our standard dulcimers. So that is really a neat idea you know the, the whole max dad thing yeah uh, I, saw, I saw richard had posted a, a bunch of those that he had made he's uh i guess got a bunch of orders for those so that's really really neat. yeah yeah and i there's yeah there's some videos of me i think playing yeah playing up on on the, the full craps got posted but so it's a it's a real real neat instrument and uh yeah. enjoying them all the biggest struggle i have is finding time to play them all yes yes but, i completely get that <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so you said you like to flat pick. Now, um, do you have a on your standard dulcimers? Do you um, do you have a, a string gauge that you like? Yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. And so I tend to I don't like the double melody string. Mm -hmm. uh, I never have because uh, because I'm plucking the strings, you know, one at a time. Sometimes I hit that double melody. Sometimes I don't. I just don't like the sound of it. And probably half of the people, as I go around, half of the people have taken it off. So I like to play with three equidistant strings. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see. And so as far as string gauges, I did a lot of playing around a number of years ago with the strings that I like. And now I've got, so I've got, right now I've got, uh, and I've got a longer scale. Got the longer yeah. scale. So I have a 13. I have a 13 for more volume on my uh, melody. The middle string is a 16, that's 0.016 inches, thousandths yeah. of an inch, 16 yeah. thousandths of an inch. And the bass is an 026, okay? Oh, yeah. It's a bottom bass string, and I love, I like the ones that are made by Elixir. Elixir, they have a thin polymer coating that they put over their wound strings, and so the mm -hmm. strings last longer, they right. last longer, and it, it, it takes out some of the squeaky, squawky noise that you get by, you know, sliding your fingers over that, that bass string. And so I like wow. 
I like elixir strings. I like elixir strings. Nice. I'm finding that everybody has their own preferred gauges, you know, and yeah. they're all different. So it's interesting to hear about all that. Yeah, and as, of course, and as your dulcimer, uh, as the vibrating string length gets shorter, you've got to increase the 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 size of the strings to get 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 the right amount of tension there and that. But I like I like uh, heavier I like heavier strings. I don't like the strings to do a lot of you know on some dulcimers with light ones, the strings really move around a lot. I don't like yeah. that feel. I like a little stiffer like a little stiffer feel. Okay, but yeah. I like the volume. I like to get it you know, the, as much volume as I can out of the, the instrument. Right. Yeah. So I would ask you the same thing about action height. You probably like action height a little higher too. Then. Yeah, it's a little higher. I don't know if you can see. Let's see. What do we got here? That's about the height that I've got. I don't know if that's, if you consider yeah. that low action or not, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The action is probably, I would say it's probably like medium. It's not super okay. low. It's not super yeah. low, but it's not it's not too high either. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got a question here. Let me pop it up. From Judy, she asked Dave, "How often do you change your strings on your dulcimer?" Uh, normally, what I do is uh, before uh, a concert that I would do, I'll change out the melody and the middle string. The melody uh -huh. and middle. Usually I keep the bass string there. It's got, it's the one with that polymer coating on it. And, uh, but the other ones, you know, I'll change the steel strings that are there. And I'm always amazed when I do how much easier my fingers move. Much. Oh, yeah. move. And, uh, and so usually before, a, you know, concert. So how often is that? So probably like, uh, you know, I end up maybe every six weeks, every month to six weeks. Yeah. You know, I'll change those strings out. Uh, I actually just took uh, at Kentucky Music Week. Richard was there, and uh, and I played, and I had some dents in the frets from just you know playing so much, and there were dents where my fingers pushed the string down into the uh, push the string down into the uh, the fret wire that's there. And so he was uh, gracious enough to just fix that all up for me, and it just played smooth as as butter. Nice. <laughs> Oh, it was wonderful. So, Richard, thank you for that. You did a did a great job. <laughs> did a great job. All right. Let's see. We've got another question. Lori asks, "What brand of pick do you use?" Uh, for picks, I like the I like the Herndon picks. I like the Herndon picks. And, Are you uh, a yellow or a blue or a red? I'm a yellow. I'm a yellow. yellow. I heard those are the most uh, the most uh, flexible or the thinnest of them all although i think at one time i took out a micrometer and they all seem like they were the same thickness so i think maybe they might use a different little different resin in their formulation oh. and so i use a uh, so here is my here's my herndon pick here's my herndon pick and what i've done is uh, i like to get it a little bit thinner and so i'll take a little scissors and i'll shave off you know, a little bit here, and I'll shave off a little here. And then to help me hold on to the pick, uh, this was something Bob Webb showed me. I've got a little piece of like medical tape. You can buy this uh, at he. You can buy this. It feels almost like a band aid, but it's yeah. tape that you can put on, and you just cut a little, you know, inch comes an inch thing. You can get it on Amazon, uh, and it just I just fold that over there, and that gives me something to to hold on to the the pick a little bit better with. Okay. Yeah. And with the lap Joe, I use the same pick, but this is this is what I've done here. With the lap Joe, I actually punch, take like a leather punch and punch a hole in the uh, in the the tip that's facing down, and that lightens up the uh, the the string a little bit, makes the pick a little bit more flexible. And I think, it's like, yeah. Now, if I'm playing in a big jam with lots of folks, I'll just use I'll use the regular pick. But if I'm playing with a smaller group or whatever, this gives a, I like the tone that I get with this. Nice. So I'm, I'm a yellow. I'm a yellow guy. Yellow, yellow yeah. horn. Love the yellow. horn. They don't, they don't. You don't get that clicky clacky noise. You know that I don't like at all on the on the strings. Right. Nice. Okay. Let's see. We've got another question. Oh, the other interesting thing with the pick, the other, I don't know if anybody's encountered this or not, 
there's a, like a Roman numeral one and two and three for the thickness. That Roman numeral one, I take a scissors and I scrape that off because sometimes that gets caught in my strings. And so I'll just take a scissors, just take a yeah. scissors and then just rub it, you know, rub it on here and just, just scrape off the, you know, just scrape off that number one. It comes off right. really easy. And I'll trim this up a little bit and then I'm ready, ready to go. Nice. All right, let's see. Jim asks, any recommendations for someone attending the Black Mountain Festival for the first time? Uh, uh, any recommendations? I attended my Black Mountain Festival for the first time last year, and it was awesome. It was just a, it's a wonderful festival. Chuck Mosley does just a, a great job. Uh, he's got, you know, friends and family that help him get it all set up. The concerts and the backdrop for the concerts, they were wonderful. Uh, it's at this, uh, it's in a really, uh, uh, it's in the, the mountains there in North Carolina. And it was really a pretty kind of a setting. And so I'm going to be going back again this year. They have the classes and the meals are in this, are in a lodge. Uh, some of the classes are there. Some of the people stay there. Some of the people stay in other buildings. This used to be a, uh, it used to be a, a college campus of some kind. Uh, and so they're, they stay in the different buildings and some of the classes are in an off building. They have a shuttle that takes you around because it's kind of up and down hills. So they have a shuttle to run people and the instructors around to the different uh, uh, classes and the locations right. that they be. Uh, some people see bears walking. Rick Thumb was uh, walking back to his dormitory and there was a bear that was kind of, he looked around and there was a big black bear that was oh, yeah. there. And so that, oh, yeah. that kind of adds some excitement, but it's a, it's a great festival. And I really had a, a, a wonderful time and uh, looking forward to going back. It's in October. It's in October. Uh, one thing I would say just is in this area in October, you don't really know what the weather's going to be like. It could be really cold or it might not be. So I would sort of bring some varying clothing as far as that's concerned, but Let's see what we've got next. Richard gives us some information about um, the action height. And yeah, it looks like yours is a little higher, if I'm reading uh -huh. that, than standard. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like it, and it gives, again, more volume and less chance of you know, the strings rattling on the, on the frets as you play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you have any like really funny stories or anything like that you'd like to share? Maybe that happened while you're at one of these events over the years. <laughs> any funny stories, funny stories. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> funny stories. One thing I, while you're thinking about that, I'd like to ask a little bit about um, the story behind the three-legged dog song, because that's hilarious. I heard you that do, is, do that, and it, it was great. That three-legged dog, yeah, that is, as soon as people hear that song, that's that becomes their favorite. <laughs> that becomes yeah. hard, to, hard to get, but it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful song. It was written by Tim Bays, B-A-Y-S. And if you go, if you go on the internet, you'll find it on YouTube. And if okay. you type in, you've typed three-legged dog into the, into like uh, the search, you're going to pull yeah. up all kinds of YouTube videos of little three-legged dogs hopping around, you know, that people have done. So it's hard to find the song, but if you type in his name, Tim Bays, B-A-Y-S, it'll pull it right up. It'll okay. Pull it right up. Yeah, I heard you do that, and I just died of laughter. That was that's such a hilarious song. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to do. It's I I, I enjoy doing uh, doing songs that people can sing along to, and uh, especially and especially if you find one that's funny, you know, that's yeah. real funny. I enjoy doing that. Another another one that's uh, that's uh, that I'll do frequently is. Uh, uh, the nose song. If my nose was running money, my nose, <laughs> if my nose was running money, I'd blow it all on you. And that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. And that, it's hysterical. 
it's hysterical. Yeah. So that that's a fun one to do too. That's a fun oh one. yeah, that sounds great. Um, now tell me a little bit about. I've seen you performing with uh, where you you don't have the dulcimer on your lap. You have it up on a stand. Mm -hmm. So do you prefer to play that way or? Uh, well, yeah, I, I like to play with it on the stand, although I haven't done it in the past couple of years. Uh, but I, but I enjoy playing, you know, standing up when you're singing, it's, it's good. It kind of frees you up to do that. And it's interesting when you're standing on a stand with a stand there, what you can do is to get like to the octave region of the dulcimer, you just take a little half a step to the right and you're like yeah. right there, you know, so you're not having, you're, you're not quite as confined as you are. The stand that I use, I modified from a, a, a double keyboard stand. They have keyboard stands where they have, you know, like this layer, and then they have another layer that's adjustable that you can put yeah. another keyboard on. And I thought, I thought, gee, if I, I bet if I stand on the other side of that, I could use that. And and I had to modify it a little bit to hold the dulcimer. But but yeah, I, I use that, and that's nice because it gets. Uh, if it's nice, I remember the first time I played the dulcimer at church, I was sitting down in the front playing it and all these people in the back were like standing up because they heard this wonderful music from from an instrument they hadn't heard before and they didn't yeah. know what it was. So they were all standing up. So something like this lets you you stand up and yeah. uh, let people see it. It's also it's also really nice for teaching, too, in that um, uh, teaching in that you can instantly you've got your dulcimer there and you can instantly move it away to go help somebody if they're having a, an issue or they're having a problem something you don't have to like take the dulcimer unstrap it you know put it over to the side and then get up you can just walk away and the dulcimer is secured there on the stand so it's really that's really a neat uh, a neat aspect of it also yeah and for teaching i'm sure that's so everybody can see what you're doing that would be wonderful so yeah um, but when you're just around the house, you play it sitting down, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, for All sure. Right. Here we go. We've got another question from Fullcraft Instruments. Other than dulcimer players or Bob Webb, who is the most famous musician you know? Oh, my gosh. These are such good questions. Um <laughs> Such good questions. Uh, have I ever met any real famous musicians? Uh, hmm. Uh, Bob Webb was a huge influence on really getting me going on the dulcimer. He got me started. And it was interesting. Uh, um, I started taking his class. Bob had been teaching the dulcimer for years in uh, the Charleston, West Virginia area. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and so I got going with him. He got me going and then he had me as a helper, you know, and I was helping him with his classes. Well, then I started to go to Dalsimer festivals, you know, mm -hmm. all around the country and do that and came back and got, and Bob had no idea that the Dals, that they even had like a Dalsimer festival, that they would have these things all around the country. And so yeah. I talked him to coming into, uh, to, to one and he did, and he had met Heidi Muller at a, at a music festival that he went out to east and so anyway they they became good friends and things and now now they're they're together who's the most famous musician i know hmm i don't know that's a uh, i know lots of lots of i know lots of uh i know lots of dulcimer players yeah uh, and some are the best in the world you know rick thumb and ken kladner these guys are these guys are awesome yeah well, you can think about it. <laughs> it's, uh, um, yeah. Let's see. Let me ask you this. Uh, a, funny, a funny story. A funny uh -huh. story. Um, you, uh, I was at the North Georgia Foothills Dalsimer Association a number of years ago, one of their, their fall festival that, that's uh -huh. in October time. I was down there and getting ready to go on stage and, um, uh, one of the other performers was sitting next to me and he leaned over and he said, did you used to teach chemistry? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he said, in, in Cincinnati? And I, yeah. And I said, yeah. He said, 
you were my chemistry teacher. And it was Bob Bentz who plays guitar, and he's the he's the backup for Kendra yeah. Ward, Hammer Dulcimer. She plays uh, Noter style Dulcimer, but also the uh, plays the Hammer Dulcimer. And Bob yeah. Bentz is uh, her husband, and he backs her up on that. So he was actually a student of mine that I taught chemistry to. So that, that was kind of a, that was kind of a real coincidence. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a great story. Okay, let's see. We've got another question from Karen. Do you think the Mountain Dulcimer will continue to be more popular? Oh, to become more popular? Yeah, uh, yeah I, th I, th I think so. I think the popularity of it, I think it's increasing and you've got, uh, you know, it's easy now to electrify the, the dulcimer. We've got, you know, nice pickups in there and things. And you got Bing Futch out there doing all kinds of wild stuff with it. And uh, Butch Ross. And and uh, so, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's, and there's no ends to the different kinds of music. You got Sam Edelston that's doing, you know, rock and roll kind of stuff. And uh, so it's really, it's really a very versatile you know, instrument in terms of the different genres of music that you can play with it. So I, I, I see it. I see it increasing. You know, I see yeah, it slowly. Sure. Slowly, it's not as popular as a guitar. And a lot of folks, uh, even if you go to a music store and you say, "I need something for my dulcimer," they're like, "Well, what's what's a dulcimer?" You know, they they don't they yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that leads me to this. Um, how do you, you you talk about guitar and stuff and how do you feel about the frets? You know, everybody's going to, you know, a lot of people are adding the one and a half. Some people are going all the way up to chromatic. What are your thoughts there? I think there's room for everybody, of course, but. There, there is, there's, there's room for everybody. Uh, my preference really is that, uh, uh, is that when folks get started, when folks get started that they just have a, maybe a six and a half on there. They have the yeah. six and a half and they're in DAD tuning uh, because what makes the dulcimer so easy to play is the ability to slide along, you know, to slide along the fretboard, uh, to slide right. along and play those melodies and have those drones ringing. Well, the more frets we put on here, the more frets we put on there, the less of that sliding you can do. You've got to, uh, you know, we've got to skip, kind of skip over frets. They're, they're, because they're not they're not in our scale that we do, um, and so I would like to see people start just as beginners, just with you know with with that, with experiencing it with that, and not having the one and a half. And once right. they get going, I was telling me if there's a reason that you know you need a one and a half, then great, get it. But other than that, because other than that, it's going to be a fret you got to stay away from, and you're not using most of the time. Okay, I love to have. I love to have a, a C note that we have here. So I love to have this little partial one and a half to get the C note without having to go to like maybe a six on my bass. But but this is and this is just my this is just my preference. Okay. Yeah. God, I know the other line of thought uh, with Richard is that you know we we can uh, put it on there and people will just get used to it. And just get yeah. Used to it. So uh, yeah. that's that's my own bias. It's interesting. And so th for this one, I've got a little partial one and a half. I don't have the eight and a half or a little partial eight and a half that's down here. I don't have that. But um, on my lap Joe that I play. Yeah. On my lap Joe that I play, I have a, this one, I do have a one and a half on it. And yeah. I like that. I like the one and a half. And I also have, if you can see it here. Oh, partial. I have a ten and a half, a little partial ten and a half fret. Okay, and you'll probably never guess why I have that there. No. Okay, and it's because it's because when we uh, when I play an A in the key of A, which is you know not uncommon when you're playing old time tunes with folks, you're going to be in yep. the tune of A. We're we're like missing a note. Here's my A. We've got the six. We're missing a note. We're missing the six and a half equivalent. We've got that. Whoops. Now I've got. Yes. My six. 
I got my full scale. Now in the key of G, we've got it in the key of G. Yeah. Right. We got the whole scale. And in D, we got the whole scale. But when we go to A, we don't. We're missing a note. And we've got that okay. same note. We got that same note in the uh in the what would be the 13 and a half in the uh, mm -hmm. G chart or the six and a half in the middle, but that's not real if you're sliding along on the melody string, it's not really practical to access that. So anyway, right. I got a little, little partial fret here when I play in the nice. CMA. So that's kind of that's kind of a unique thing. So would you would you say that you're more of a open player and you don't play a lot with the capo, or do you? No, I would say I play a lot with the capo. In fact, oh, okay. when it comes when it comes to changing keys, uh, what I'll do is I'll put a capo on three rather than retuning my dulcimer. I could retune the. Uh, the middle string and and have changed the A into uh, so I could be tuned like D G D and right. then my Do though would start on the three and right. uh, and my chord positions are going to change. Yeah. Uh, what I like to do, I'll put a capo on three and then the neat thing that happens, uh, the neat thing that happens is that all of my chord shapes stay the same. They're different right. chords, but the the root chord and the the four and the five chord. Those shapes are exactly the same as they are in the key of D. And they're the same when you go to A. When we go to mm -hmm. key of A, they're the same shapes. And so I've got my chords and all those without having to retune, without having to right. retune. So I like I like that approach and being able to uh, to do that. So, I, I yeah, I use the capo a lot, a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we've got time for about one more question and a C1 here. From Jim, have you ever had to glue a crack in the wood grain on the back of a dulcimer? Oh, I never, never have had to do that. I would go to, I would, if I had a crack on my dulcimer, I would call full craft up. I would go to Richard and have those yep. because those folks know what they're doing and I would just have them fix it for me. Yeah, absolutely. Easily. And they've got all that experience on knowing how to really do that and, and do it right. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure uh, that Richard would be very happy to help you with it, Jim. Uh, so if you just give him a call there and talk to Haley, I'm sure you could send it over. Or if you're close enough to visit, you know, you could do that. As yeah, well. I, I've got a friend of mine that just, uh, they had, he had an issue where he, he, he grabbed his dulcimer and it but he pushed his fingers like right on through the sound hole here and broke off a piece of that. And so he yeah. took he talked to Richard about getting that getting that fixed up. But yeah, that would be my that would be my my thing to do. I would go go to yeah. Richard. Go, yeah. to Richard. go to the yeah. pros. Go to the pros. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. Um it has been my supreme pleasure to talk to you today, Dave. The time has gone so quickly. I know. <laughs> Hey, Tom, glad you have So, uh, sorry, I, I think I cut you off there on that last. Okay, so, yeah, so this has been great. Uh, Mandy, thank you for, for doing the interview, and uh, oh, yeah. you, did a, you did a great job. And Richard, thanks for helping to support this and, and getting people to know uh, a little bit more about us, who we are. Yeah, and folks, be sure you subscribe <laughs> down below to the channel. Share this video on Facebook with your friends and family so everybody can learn about Dave. And uh, I'll let you know when we've got other, other uh, interviews and everything like that coming up. And for now, we'll just sign off and say goodbye and hope you have a happy 4th of July, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.